Welcome, everyone. Welcome to today's City Club Forum. My name is Ralph Delarada. I have the pleasure of being the president of the City Club of Cleveland this year. And it's nice to see a packed room here and to see so many of our board members and past presidents as well and so many members of our fine club. The City Club of Cleveland was established in October of 1912 and has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue, covering truly the most important topics of our time. We draw our guest speakers from a variety of fields and backgrounds, and they provide a national forum for free speech, something I know all of us here in this country hold dear and continue to hold dear. These speakers are rich in experience and knowledge and are here to spur discussion and also learning amongst the citizens of Cleveland as well as our greater national audience. Today, it is both my personal and professional pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, especially in light of our friendship, which spans, I believe, over 15 years. Our honored guest today is Sandra, or as we call her, Sandy Pianalto, who is president and chief executive officer of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Sandy is a widely respected local and national leader who is well-versed on numerous and complicated issues currently facing our economy. I anticipate we'll have a great question and answer period today. Uh, as one thing as this recent election showed us and the pollsters uh, evidenced is that the economy was certainly first and foremost on everyone's mind. I don't think it's changed today. On a national level, she participates in the formulation of United States monetary policy by voicing her opinions and by being a voting member of the Federal Open Market Committee. Ms. Pianalto voted in favor of the recent 50 basis point cut in the federal funds target rate, which is the interest rate banks charge on overnight loans. The rate now at 1% is amongst the lowest since the aftermath of the dot-com bubble and certainly historically one of the lowest of all time. As president and CEO of the Cleveland Fed, Sandy also leads 1,600 employees in Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Pittsburgh who provide economic research, supervise financial institutions, and provide payment services to commercial banks and the U.S. government. She also spends time meeting with management and directors to discuss the bank's strategy and operations. And it's nice to have some of those directors here with us today. Since her family immigrated to Northeast Ohio from Italy, Sandy has remained deeply connected to the area and is actively involved in the Cle in Cleveland civic community. She is chairman of the board of the United Way of Greater Cleveland and serves on the boards of several other local organizations. These reputable groups include the Cleveland Foundation, the Greater Cleveland Partnership, University Hospitals and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum, which I share board memberships with her and get to see her tremendous commitment and involvement. Northeast Ohio Council on Higher Education, and the Ohio Business Alliance for Higher Education and the Economy. I can vouch for her commitment to these not-for-profits and to our region, and as I said, I've had the pleasure of sitting with her on some of these boards and watching her great leadership. Somehow, some way, Sandy finds the time for all of these important activities despite her tremendous workload at the Fed. She began her career as an economist at the Federal Reserve Board of Governors and also served on the Budget Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives. She is a Federal Reserve veteran as her tenure with the bank spans 25 years. She has served there as an economist, as Vice President of Public Affairs, Chief Operating Officer, and in several other positions before becoming the Cleveland Fed's 10th President in 2003. Sandy earned a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Akron and then gained a master's in economics from the George Washington University. And I knew there was another reason why I liked her. She also graduated from the advanced management program at Duke University, the Fuqua School of Business, my alma mater, and holds other numerous honorary degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a personal and professional honor for me to introduce this distinguished public servant. Please join me in welcoming Sandra Pinalto to the City Club. Thank you, Ralph, for that kind introduction and for the invitation to join you here today. Uh, it is an honor for me to speak once again before 
this oldest and continuous free speech forum in the United States. And it's also good to see so many of my good friends uh, here today. There are two people that I would like to uh, recognize. Les Finney, who is a member of our board of directors the Federal, at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, and Henry Meyer, who was a former director, and he currently serves as the Federal Advisory Council member representing the 4th District at the Board of Governors um, on a regular basis. So thank you both for being here today. The last time I spoke to this forum was back in spring of 2004. Uh, just about a year after I had been appointed uh, CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. And I was saying to Ralph that um, it's typical that uh, when someone is new in their position that they're invited to speak before the City Club. And um, a, a couple of years ago, someone had w wondered whether I was going to come back. And, and at that time, um, the rules didn't allow a speaker to come back. And you know, I said it was unfortunate because you learn so much more as you get more experience in your position. What I didn't realize is how much more I'd be learning, especially <laughs> over the past year. At the last time I was here, I shared with you some of my views on the state of the regional economy. During a relatively calm and prosper, uh, prosperous period for our nation's economy. Since then, we've seen dramatic changes in our credit markets that have not only affected our region and national economies, but they've affected the economies world of the world. Indeed, these are historic and unprecedented times. The Federal Reserve has certainly been getting its share of press coverage in recent months. We've also seen numerous articles about Main Street versus Wall Street, as if there was this giant wall dividing those two entities. In reality, the two of them work together. They are the nuts and bolts of finance and commerce that affect all of our daily lives. So in my remarks today, I'm going to talk about Wall Street and Main Street. I'll describe the turmoil that we're seeing in financial markets. I'll also comment on the Federal Reserve's response to the current situation. I'll make a few comments about the economy. And then I'll address the question that I get asked most often today. When will the financial markets return to normal? <laughs> Let me begin by walking you through a bit of history behind Wall Street and Main Street. I'd like to take you back, all the way back to the early years of the 20th century before the Federal Reserve even became into existence. The story starts in 1906, a time when the US economy had been expanding for the previous 50 years. But that boom ended uh, following a massive earthquake in San Francisco. And over the first quarter, of the year 1907, the Dow fell nearly 25%. In October of 1907, the turmoil grew. A number of leading trust companies had supported an attempt by speculators to ma manipulate the stock price of a very important mining, uh, copper mining company. Depositors began to suspect that the trust companies were insolvent, and they feared that their savings was at risk. Once the trust companies lost confidence, uh, the public's confidence, depositors demanded to withdraw their funds immediately before they would lose everything. Panic quickly broke out. A brokerage firm declared bankruptcy. And a number of well-established banks were in turmoil. Sound familiar? <laughs> but 100 years ago, there was no official mechanism to, to absorb the shocks. There was no Federal Reserve. Writing to the rescue was someone who is still legendary in financial, in financial circles, J.P. Morgan. He functioned as the de facto central bank for the U.S. economy, and he played a pivotal role in ending the financial panic. With New York City teetering on the verge of bankruptcy, the original trust companies facing runs on their deposits, he brought together the presidents of dozens of trust companies at his home library. He told them to cobble together a loan totaling $25 million. 